projector. So, so a projector, like a video projector, it comes out with a, a like a pyramid of light. So it kind of like starts off really small, like you can imagine it as a point where it's at the projector, and it comes out like a plane which gets bigger with distance. So that's like a, this, this thing called a frustum. And you can imagine that every vertical slice is a column of pixels. And if you take a slice of this, of the shape, you get a triangle. So you project it over here, and it makes a triangle out. And it's, it's one pixel wide, so it's like a, less than a millimeter. And it kind of travels through the air and un, uninterrupted. And then if you put a string that exactly aligns with that, then it'll, get, it'll catch the light from that triangle. And then along that string will be the, the column of pixels. You can imagine you put strings all along next to each other, then you'll get all, each string will be one column of pixels. Now if you move these strings to different distances from the projector, they'll still catch that column of pixels, it'll, and it obviously it'll get a bit smaller and higher or whatever, but you can, you can adapt for that. Um, and you can put them all at kind of random distances, and from the point of view of the projector, it still sees one after the other, string, 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 string. It doesn't care how far away they are because it's still, in its view, it's 2D view. Um, but from everywhere else, they're distributed in space and all these pixels are all over the place. But you know where they are. So with, with this project Lightscape, we, we wanted to be able to make people feel that there was a, a visual entity that shared their space that wasn't portrayed through another media, which was outside of the, the space they're interacting with. So they had to look into something else, like a projection screen or, or, or whatever, um, to imagine another space, but it was inside the same space as they were, the one they were already naturally interacting with. And that would somehow give a, a visual shift to the space. You would, you light is in space. So if we can manipulate points of light in space, which are kind of uh, minimal in themselves, but together create a form, then, then there was something there. There was some way of making visual mass, uh, of, of representing material. So light from the sun. So the sun is outside, the tree is trying to ca capture all this light, and the optimum way of doing it would be like a, a, just a flat plane f facing towards the sun. But the sun moves around, and it has to fight with other trees, and it has to grow in a certain way. So it ends up being this kind of like volumetric thing, which all the parts of it, all these leaves, want to capture the light. So they all grow until they, they, get, until they get hit by the, the sunlight, and then it creates this form which is optimized to be seen from outside, to be seen by the sun, but um, is distributed in space. And this became like the perfect uh, uh, naturally existing material to try and make into, a, in, into one of these 3D displays to make into a volumetric sculpture. Um, so then we explore it more. And, and then we started thinking about this, this term, which we use a lot called the, the aesthetic of error, which is the, the limitation to which the system can respond to your design. And, working with that as the aesthetic of your, of, your, of your output. And so what are some examples? Pixel grid. So a pixel grid is the limitation to which things can be resolved, the limitation to which you can respond to design. But if you go to something like film grain, the film grain has got a completely different personality. It deteriorates in a completely different way. And it's not like a glitch. It's not like there's something, there's a problem with it when that happens. It's just that's the limit to which you can physically respond to the design which you impose on it. So like connect images. So when you look at this, this, this wireframe or point cloud or whatever, whatever they choose to put on this, um, there's, there's a limitation to which the, the accuracy of my finger can be resolved here. And over time, that's gonna, that's gonna change. And that defines the aesthetic of this material. And that, that error there is, isn't a glitch. It's not a system doing something which, it should, which um, is failing. This is, this is just the limit to which it can do what it's intending to do. And when you design something with the system, it will have this inherent, inherent error to it. People often think that understanding a 3D world and seeing a 3D world are naturally the same thing. And I think there's a, there's a distinction there which needs to be identified by any artist who works with 3D media. People understand 3D. They understand that if they move their head left, the thing behind might come into view, and if they move their head right again, it might go back out of view. Now, does that mean that we can see in 3D? I think that we, of course, from our point of view, can point. And in order to point, we're defining a 2D direction away from us. And down that direction is something that we can see. And this happens across our entire vision. Now, this happens, this, this defines everything that we can see. We can define everything that we can see 
in 2D as a 2D map. For every position, we might be able to know more about it, like how far away it is, which object does it belong to? All these are the things which are intelligent, which involve understanding the world, but our sight in itself is a, is, a, is a 2D faculty. We see surfaces, we have line of sight. We have a position from the world with it, out from which we observe the world. We are 3D beings in a 3D world, and therefore we must see it in 2D the same way that a 2D being in a 2D world must see it in one dimension. They must see it. My thought on the topic of, of, of ideas is, is ideas are an ident identification or an encapsulation of, of a section of idea space. And we all, we're all inhabiting this idea space, and the idea space evolves through discussion. It doesn't evolve because it's, it's not a networked graph. It's, it's, a, it's a pool of ink, it's a pool of different inks. And Inside that, you can, you can find a section, like a manifold in, inside this idea space, and say, I can describe this idea here. And the skill of somebody to have an idea is the skill of somebody to articulate a section of idea space. One which leads into other things, and one which identifies the importance of that section, and why people are gathered to it, why they aggregate there. Um, so like, uh, I think there's, there's two ways of thinking about it then. Like one is like there's a frontier territory, and in the frontier is, is the unexplored land. And in the unexplored land, you're, you're, you lay claim to it by putting your flag down in something. Um, and I think that paradigm works when you're the first to approach it. Like, so then that, that, that would presume that the idea, the idea that you get is, is, a new, is a new place that no one's been before. But we know that's not true. We know everyone uh, who finds an idea is aware that other other thoughts have existed in this space. They might have just walked through it. It might have just been, might not even realized it was there or, or identified the importance of that thing. And and there is a talent to to identifying ideas, but um, to to pin your to pin the value of a project onto the identification of a position in an idea space, which has already been uh, traveled through, is. Is, is very tenuous. The, 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 there's something else which is really important about presenting new work. And it, it, there's all sorts of things to talk about, like implementation or, or context, or you're doing the right thing at the right time. Um, and to, but to, to come back and say, uh, there's two pieces of work that are very similar. There's my work, there's your work. I did mine first, you did yours later. They look very similar. Yours was more successful than mine, or yours was less successful than mine. These aren't meaningful ways of approaching this, this, this problem of the idea space, because it presumes that the, the territory belongs to you, as opposed to the map. What you've got.